Hi, I'm Daniel Andrews, owner and creator of the DAN Show, and welcome to my latest 2021 NFL Mock Draft video. Today, I'll be breaking down the Atlanta Falcons and what they're going to do with the fourth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. Now, if you're a fan of football or a fan of the draft, I strongly encourage you to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to notify you when a new video shows up. I will be releasing a new video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, plus every Friday night, 7 p.m. Central, I go live on YouTube. I answer any and all questions, but not only is it a great show just because I answer everything live, but because I have a really great community that has been joining the show. I got regulars all over the United States that not only provide great support, but really great insight to their teams. So I strongly encourage you to join a really popular, really good show. And hey, now that's over with, Let's break down the Falcons. Uh, first off, when breaking down the Atlanta Falcons, it's very important to note that they brought in a new general manager and coaching staff this offseason. I thought it was brilliant that you go ahead and get Terry Fontenot from the New Orleans Saints, your biggest rival and a very successful NFL franchise over the last several years. So you in turn get a new guy to coach your team while crippling your biggest rival. I thought that was brilliant. And then you go ahead and bring in Arthur Smith, uh, as your new head coach. I thought everything that the Falcons did this offseason as far as their hires was great. Terry Fontenot was with the Saints the last 18 years, widely respected around the NFL. Arthur Smith was a very highly thought of offensive coordinator. And what I thought was maybe the smartest thing that they did was Arthur Smith was able to convince his former coaching colleague, Dean Pease, from the Titans, he actually retired after the 2019 AFC Championship game. He was able to talk him out of retirement to take over as defensive coordinator uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. This is really good because when you're a rookie first-time head coach and you're on the offensive side of the ball, like Arthur Smith is, you want somebody with a lot of experience on the defensive side of the ball. So not only do you get somebody who's who you've coached with before. He's a very well experienced and very well thought of uh, defensive coordinator. The one thing also that really stands out is that under Dan Quinn, they ran a 4-3 cover three scheme and they've been doing that since 2015. Dean Pease runs a 3-4 multifaceted defense that's known for blitzing. They're almost polar opposites. But here's the thing, you don't bring in a re formerly retired 71-year-old defensive coordinator for a rebuilding project. That, and you also notice that with all the quarterback trades that happened this offseason, Matt Ryan was not mentioned at all. So this leads me to believe that the Falcons are, despite having a 4-12 record and the fourth pick in the NFL draft, this is a team that's going to go ahead and try to win now. Now, both the Saints and the Falcons over the years have been very aggressive in both free agency and the draft. So what I think that you're going to see is the Atlanta Falcons make a lot of moves, specifically on the defensive side of the ball in free agency. And this also shows me that I think that what they're going to do is they only have six draft picks in the draft. So I think that what they're going to do is target Pacific position groups and players in the draft. This also means anything is possible. I think the Falcons are a prime candidate to both trade up and trade down, and they could also stay with the fourth pick in the draft. I'm going to break down all three situations. Uh, first off, the Falcons can trade up. Now, if they do trade up, they're going to trade up for one player, and that player has to be skipped by the Jets. All right, we already know Trevor Lawrence is going to Jacksonville. So when you're picking four, I think that what Atlanta is going to do is they're going to eyeball one particular player in the draft. And if they fall in love with this guy and he gets by the Jets, I think Atlanta would trade with Miami. If you watch my previous video on the Dolphins, you, you know that I believe Miami will not be the team that makes the third selection in the draft. Now, they do have two number ones this year, two number twos this year, I think Atlanta would be willing to give up a second or a third round pick in the 2022 draft just to move up that one spot and to prevent from other teams from leapfrogging Atlanta. But this is only if they fall in love with a player and he gets by the Jets. 
I don't think Miami go. I'm sorry. I don't think Atlanta goes from four to two, but I 100% believe that if they fall in love with the guy. They will 100% go from four to three. Now, could Atlanta trade down? Absolutely. Now, for Dean Peace defense to work, they're going to need corners and pass rushers. All right, Dante Fowler, to me, is a better 3-4 outside linebacker, so I think that's a perfect fit for this defense, and I love A.J. Terrell, who was last year's number one pick, but you still need probably at least one of each uh, for Dean Peace defense to really work, and neither really is a good value at four. If you draft a pass rusher or a corner at four, in this year's draft, you're not getting a good value. I think some trade candidates would be Philly at six, Carolina at eight, even though they are a divisional opponent, is a possibility, unlikely, but possible. San Francisco's also been uh, noted to want to trade up in the draft. A trade partner, I think, is a little more likely than most people think would be Washington. And the reason why I think Washington would be a great trade partner is because they went from a 3-4 defense to a 4-3. Ryan Kerrigan's kind of the odd, odd man out because... Uh, two years ago, they drafted Montez Sweat in the first round. This year, they drafted Chase Young. So you have your bookends. Ryan Kerrigan's at 3-4 outside linebacker. A perfect fit in this defense, but kind of the odd guy out uh, in Washington. So Washington could throw in Ryan Kerrigan. They also have two picks in the third round. And because this is a deep corner draft, A.J. Trails picked at 16. Washington trading up to 4 and Atlanta trading back down to 19. If they can get Kerrigan, they get one of those pass rushers that you need. Plus, you could draft a corner at 19 and still be in really good shape. So, Washington's an interesting trade candidate. But in this mock draft, there are no trades. So, with the fourth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Zach Wilson, quarterback out of BYU. Now, and the way this mock draft goes, this is a dream scenario for the Atlanta Falcons as they don't have to trade down and they get their future quarterback. I am very high on Zach Wilson. I have him as my number two quarterback, but if you watch my Jets video, you know why I have them taking fields instead. Now, if Zach Wilson is gone when Atlanta makes the fourth pick in the draft and they don't trade down, I think the pick is Trey Lance, not Justin Fields. I think they go with Trey Lance at four, and the reason why is that you could use Trey Lance a lot. Really, he's basically the same type of player as Taysom Hill. He would be a Taysom Hill player while Matt Ryan is still the starter in 2021, maybe even 2022, because Taysom Hill can add to that offense while Matt Ryan is still playing at a high level. So even though in this mock draft, I do have Kyle Wilson, if he is gone, I think that Trey Lance will be the pick. Now, if I did do trades in this draft, which I'm not, I actually would have Atlanta trading up to three to go ahead and get Kyle Wilson, but only Kyle Wilson. So another thing is that in my other two mock videos, I've had multiple people comment about Penny Sewell uh, being the pick at, at both two and three. I obviously don't have him as the pick at number four. I kind of wanted to address that before I end the video. Atlanta spent two first round picks in 2019 on the right side. And then Jake Matthews, who's the left tackle, is a pretty damn good left tackle. So if the Atlanta Falcons do address the offensive line in the draft, it's not going to be at four. But hey, that's my opinion. Ultimately, I want to hear from you. Do you think I am right? Do you think I am wrong? After all, I made this video to start a conversation. I gave you my opinion. Now I want to hear yours. Hey, don't forget tonight, 7 p.m., I go live on YouTube. It's going to be a great show. Join the show and offer your opinion on the draft. I will see you tonight.